G'day guys, welcome to another episode of Shanky Garage. So in this episode, going to do a bit of a build update on where I'm at with the tunner. Also going to do a Q&A and do a bit of a year in review and wrap up 2021. So we'll jump straight into the video and hope you enjoy. Okay, to give a bit of an update, I've been working on this bumper and I've done a fair bit of work on this bumper. I've cut and shut it, so I've cut 15 mil out of each side. I've got rid of them bolt holes and filled that in, welded the brackets directly to the bumper. I've shortened up the brackets to allow the bumper to sit in 15 mil. And then I've also um, welded these strips in to smooth off the front here. So there's like an indent where that rubber sits in. And I thought that would look pretty good if I smoothed it off, and I reckon it does. It looks definitely looks different, but I think by the time it's all smoothed off and painted the same colour as a car, I reckon that's gonna look pretty good. So I ended up using some 1.2 mil sheet metal. I just cut some strips, 32 mil thick, and then the, the length of them, the sheet metal I used here, was pretty much enough to start from the middle and then fill in this whole side. There was a little bit on the end here I had to cut and um, put in a little extra piece there, but for the most part, the length of this sheet was yeah plenty long enough to, to get one side done. So I just done that on each side. I just started up one end, tacked it, and kept working my way along, and then sort of bend it into place and kept tacking it and working my way around and just used a ruler to get it nice and flush so the uh, strip just sits nice and flush in there and uh, yeah it's going to require minimal filler it's yeah it turned out really good I think so it took a while to there was a plenty of yeah little tacks I had to do um, just working my way around just tack one spot and then tack another spot and just kept working my way around yeah, there was plenty, plenty of welding there to do, and then yeah, plenty of grinding back as well. But I'm pretty happy with how it's turned out. So I've just scuffed it all up with some 60 grit on the orbital sander. So I've just gone over with yeah, orbital sander, scuffed it all up, and it's pretty much now ready for some epoxy. So I'll spray epoxy on the outside and on the inside, all in the one. And then yeah, that's all going to be sealed up then, and then I can start putting some filler over the top of the epoxy. Okay, I've just been smashing out a heap of work in the last week, so just getting it done. And I haven't really been filming a whole lot. Well, pretty much nothing at all. A lot of the stuff I've been doing is in previous episodes. So just a lot of yeah, sanding, a lot of um, painting and uh, spraying high build and stuff like that. So I just, yeah, didn't really bother filming. I just thought I'd come out here, it's Christmas day, so Merry Christmas to you all. I just thought I'd come out here and do a bit of a sort of update on, on where I'm at. So you can just see this bonnet, I've sprayed that underneath in the yellow vortex. The top is in high build, so I ended up spraying top and bottom in the high build. Then I rubbed the bottom back and then sprayed uh, that as well. And you can just see on, these, on this bigger panel just sort of what the paint is going to look like once it's sprayed on the car. Gives you a bit of a better idea of, of, of the colour. You can just see here it looks definitely looks a lot more yellow in different um, sort of different angles and stuff and then yeah in the dark areas it looks a lot more orange so it's a very sort of deceiving colour. But yeah I'm pretty happy with that coating how that's turned out on the uh, on the bonnet here. Uh, one thing to note, I ended up putting that on the car before I pulled it off and then sprayed it. So I gapped everything first and then I pulled the bonnet off and then I've sprayed underneath. So everything is all gapped, um, these doors. So we've got a five mil gap on the back, five mil gap on the front. Um, so yeah, everything is all gapped. So I won't have to touch any of it again. Once it's sprayed, that's it. It's, um, I won't have to bo bother about adjusting anything. The only thing I will have to adjust is once I get the bonnet back onto the hinges, I'll just have to adjust these. I've kind of roughly marked um, where the bolt holes were, so hopefully it won't be too bad to, to adjust them. But 
yeah, these these are adjusted. I won't have to touch these bolts. Just these uh, these ones here. So yeah, she's looking really good. I'm happy with how it's all looking. So I've still got to rub this all back. So it's going to be quite a fair bit of work in rubbing all that back. And got the uh, top of the bonnet to rub back as well. And then she's pretty much ready for paint. So yeah, long time coming. Super excited. Can see the light at the end of the tunnel. Oh, I've got the bumper done as well. And I've just got this sitting on here. It's not adjusted up or or bolted in yet it's just sitting on there for, for now but it's come up really good so obviously filled in this area here with 1.2 mil steel welded that in ground it back um, i ended up scuffing up the whole bumper in 60 grit so just scuffed up all the chrome and then i've sprayed it with epoxy so i sprayed two coats of epoxy then i put the filler on sanded all that back got it all smooth and then sprayed another two coats of epoxy and then four coats of the high build. And you can just see the sharp lines I've left on there. I was, yeah, when I was putting the filler in, I was blocking it and started to get some sharp lines and I thought that looked pretty good. So I just thought I'd keep the sharp lines. The bumpers originally got like a bit of a radius on these edges here, but I think I, yeah, really like the, um, that sharp line kind of look to it i've got sort of sharp lines on here and then i'm gonna have yeah pretty nice sharp lines down the side as well so i think it's all kind of gonna complement uh each other oh yeah i forgot now that the bumper is on there i can trial to see what these look like Before we get into the Q&A, I just wanted to do a bit of a year in review on the build and then also just the channel in general. So with the build, this time last year, I just got the four link kit fitted and I'm pretty sure I was waiting for a lot of parts to go any further with the chassis. I was waiting on the rack and pinion, I was waiting on the drop tank, still needed to plumb up the fuel, the brake lines. Um, yeah, there was still plenty of work to do on the chassis. With the cabin, I just got this back from the sandblaster at this point. It was blasted and coated in epoxy. Found a lot of uh, extra repairs that I needed to do before spraying again in epoxy and high build. So yeah, there was quite a lot of work still to do on the cabin. You can just see all these old panels as well. They were all in the old paint. Um, so yeah, it's definitely come a long way in the last year. Ended up getting it started. So that was a good milestone. Got some colour sprayed, which was a good milestone as well. So yeah, overall, pretty happy with the progress of the build. But not only has the tunnel come a long way, the channel has come a long way as well in the last year. This time last year, I just hit a thousand subscribers and got monetized. So yeah, a year later, we've gone from 1,000 subscribers to 5,400 subscribers. So massive growth there. And a big thanks to you guys for, for subscribing and supporting. The production value of the channel has also improved. At the start of the year, I invested in a gimbal and that has taken all that shaky footage out. If you go back to some of my earlier videos, there was a lot of camera shake. So that's yeah, improved the quality of the video footage with the gimbal. Also invested in some uh, new lenses and some new audio, the um, cordless or Bluetooth microphones. So yeah, just um, improved the production value there. Overall, the look of the channel has also improved. We've got the new logo made up this year and also the new intro video or animation at the start. I uh, have added in the merch store and I think, yeah, just overall the feel and uh, look of the channel has improved. So going into the Q&A, there was a few questions left in the comments, so we'll get straight into them. So the first question is from Ryan Tiak, and he's asking how are the neighbors coping with the noise? And to be honest, it hasn't been an issue. I haven't had any complaints so far. The neighbors next to me, he's never home. I think I've seen him like three or four times in the two years that I've lived here. 
Um, his parents come and maintain the house and mow the lawns and stuff. So yeah, I hardly ever see him. So yeah, that's no worries. And then the other neighbor is a business. So yeah, that's no issues either. But I do try and limit the noise from around eight in the morning till five o'clock at night. Uh, I don't want to be out here yeah, grinding away at six in the morning. So I do restrict sort of yeah, the times I am working in here with, with the loud noises. So the next question or the next two questions is from Michael Abbott. What do you do for work, mate? And then uh, there's another question from the Shed Sesh. So, hey, Damo, how you going? Um, Damo's got a YouTube channel as well called the Shed Sesh and he's building a one tonner. So go check out his channel as well. Um, so yeah, just search uh, the Shed Sesh, it's hard to say. But Damo's asking, if you're up for questions, I know you're a diesel mechanic, but do you actually work? What's the work-life balance? Because you're getting heaps of life done. But yeah, as Damo mentioned, I am a diesel mechanic by trade, but I'm not doing that anymore. I actually started an OnlyFans a couple years ago. So I've just been doing OnlyFans plus the YouTube channel. <laughs> I'm joking, I don't have an OnlyFans. That's just a joke. But yeah, in all honesty, I actually work for a mining company. And then within that company, I'm a part of a small team that is involved in implementing and developing autonomous machines into their sites. So autonomous machines are basically robots or machines that can work by themselves without having any operators in them. So it's a very interesting job. There's a lot that goes in that. There's uh, networking involved in that. So they work on a Wi-Fi network. So yeah, there's uh, a lot of networking involved. There's a lot of uh, extra hardware on the machines, like extra ECMs. Um, and then there's yeah, extra software and stuff involved. So yeah, there's a lot that goes in that. It's a very interesting job and I do enjoy it. So yeah, if the world gets taken over by robots and yeah, you can blame me for that one. So yeah, watch out for Skynet in the future. But yeah, that's basically what I do for a living. I don't have an OnlyFans. I yeah, work for a uh, mining company. And I guess my work-life balance, I am working less these days. I've spent the last 10 or so years working a lot, building up my career. Um, and it's only in the last uh, year or two I've been working less. I've got a lot more time than myself. That's why I've been able to get into this uh, build, do this uh, YouTube channel. So the next question is from Alistair Benny and he's asking anything you do different when it comes to setting the shed up? I'm pretty happy with how the shed is set up. I spent a fair bit of time getting it all set up while I was waiting for this car to come up from South Australia. So I built benches, I put things on the walls, so I got them off the ground, hung them up on the walls. Um, yeah, I spent a fair bit of time getting it all set up right, and I'm pretty happy with how it is. It's yeah, good workflow. There's plenty of room to be able to work around on the car. Um, and I also, when I got the shed built, I actually mocked up the shed in paint 3D and I got everything to scale. I made sort of benches and um, made like a sort of car to scale so that I could move it around within the shed and just try and figure out what the best layout is. So I think, yeah, spending that bit of time and designing um, has made the layout of the shed work really well. So yeah, I'm happy with it. The only thing I would do different, and this probably goes back to actually when I got the shed built, was make it higher. So I could have maybe put a hoist in, but the problem with putting a hoist in, like this shed is not huge, it's pretty decent, but it's not huge. But if you put a hoist in, you're gonna kind of be restricting how much room you have in the shed and you're gonna be kind of restricting. If I put one in this middle bay, you're not gonna be able to put a car in the end bay kind of thing because of the post. So. So yeah, this, this shed's not quite big enough probably for a hoist, um, but I just kind of wish I did make it higher so I probably could have put it like a mezzanine or something in there. But overall, the shed uh, layout is pretty good. I'm happy with that. So the next question is from Craig Meston and he's asking, what events are you looking at doing and are you just going to cruise the ute? Um, yeah, primarily I'm gonna just cruise in this ute. I did build it as a cruiser and I will be doing some events. I have entered into Rocky Nats uh, next year. So that's in April. So that'll be my first event that I'm gonna go to. And then if you're familiar with the Brisbane car scene, there's the Joe Diners meetups. So I'll probably yeah, go to a few of them Joe Diner meetups. So they're absolutely huge. I just went to one um, yeah, a, a week ago, the end of the year meetup, and there was probably like 500 plus cars. It was absolutely massive. So yeah, looking forward to going to some meetups and some cruises. I probably want to organize maybe like a ton of cruise here in Brisbane. So yeah, get a heap of people with tonners together and go for a bit of a meetup and cruise. 
Um, one year I might go to summer nights, but yeah, I'm just gonna take it as it comes, just cruising it, enjoy it, and uh, we'll see what happens. So the next question is from Hugh, and he's asking how much has the build cost so far? Now this is, yeah, something I haven't really thought about or added up before. I think I'd probably get quite a bit of a shock if I did. I'll start at the top and the engine was about $15,000. Now that was built about 12 years ago. I don't know what it costs to build an engine these days, but yeah, about $15,000. That was, yeah, all balanced, crack tested, acid washed. Um, that was, yeah, full um, assembly dyno tuned uh, everything. So it was roughly about $15,000 for the engine. The trans and converter, that was about $4,000. So that was full rebuilt transmission, full manualized, beefed up with the converter. So that was roughly about $4,000. The diff assembly, that was including the brakes. So that was from Castle Main Rod Shop. So it comes as assembly. You can get the brakes, the disc brakes added. So that was about $4,500. The Wheelwood front disc brake kit was about $1,500. The Wheelwood master cylinder kit, the proportional valve, about $600. The tubular control arm kit, $2,300. The four link kit with coilovers, that was about $2,000. Um, the rack and pinion steering kit, that was about $2,200. The drop tank, uh, and that was with the fuel pump as well. That was about $2,000, so that was yeah, a custom drop tank. And it was also um, powder coated as well. The fuel system, uh, fuel hoses, fittings, hard lines, a regulator, the filters. So yeah, all the hose and fittings, you know, your stainless steel. Yeah, all that stuff, it's not cheap. That came to about $1,700. The tail shaft, that was about $800. The stainless steel exhaust, that was about $3,000. That was, yeah, all the mufflers, the resonators, the, the piping, plus the labor to help TIG weld it up. TIG weld it up. So yeah, 3,000 for the exhaust. Um, then there's, yeah, various hose and fittings. So once again, the stainless steel hoses and fittings. Um, so yeah, that was transmission, cooler lines, the power steering lines, there was the brake lines, the stainless steel um, brake hoses. So yeah, that was probably roughly $1,000. And then there was all the parts from rare spares. So there was the cowl, the plenum, the floor pans, the hinges, the mirrors, all the rubbers, the seals, all the screws. Um, that was, yeah, probably about $3,000 from parts from rare spares. There was the Holly Pro Dash and all the sensors to go with that. So your oil sensor, um, your coolant sensor, so yeah, that was probably about $3,200 there. There was the wiring kit, plus all the billet buttons, the LED lights, probably $1,100 there. Uh, the billet steering column, that was about $1,500. Um, then there's just all various pieces like trans cooler, the power steering pump, engine mounts, air cleaner, ceramic coated headers. Um, or, or ceramic coating the headers, the scoop, the billet hinges. Yeah, heaps of various parts. I've probably forgot stuff out of that, but I would probably say about $4,000 there for all that stuff. Um, the interior, now I haven't got the interior done. I've been quoted up. That's getting done in March. That's gonna be roughly about six to $7,000. It's gonna be a really nice interior, mind you, and then plus the seats on top of that. Um, so this XR6 seats, they were $400. So I'd say probably about $7,000 for the interior. Then there's the paint, the DNA paint, just the paint itself. So the base coat white, the yellow plus the clear. It was about $2,200 for the paint. Uh, and then on top of that, you've got all the epoxy, you've got your high bill, there's a few cans of filler, there's the KBS to spray the chassis. Um, there's the Raptor liner that I use for underneath. I would probably say all that stuff would be about $2,000. There was the sandblasting, about $1,200 worth of sandblasting there. That was cab and then all the panels and then coated uh, in epoxy. Um, there's all the consumables on top of that as well. So you got mid gas, thinners, rags, prep sole tape, drop sheets, measuring cups, strainers, just, yeah, all that stuff, probably say, what, a thousand bucks there. So all up, 
that is 66,800. So that's just in parts alone. There's probably things I've forgotten out of that as well. So by the time I'm finished, that hasn't even started with the tray. So by the time I'm finished, I would say it's probably gonna be $70,000 in parts. So yeah, $70,000 in parts, and that's not including labor. So if you wanna add up the labor, obviously that's just my time. So I'm not really classing that as, uh, as cost for the build because it's my own time. It's my own time investment that's gone into it. But just to give a bit of a rough idea, I sort of figured out roughly how many hours I've worked on this thing so far. And being pretty conservative, I think so far I've probably spent about 1500 hours on it. I kind of just averaged out what I would spend a week uh, working on this thing. And yeah, it's been about a year and a half so far. So I would say probably about 1500 hours conservative. So if you charged out 1,500 hours, let's just say $70 per hour. So that is $105,000 in just labor itself. And it's not finished. I would say by the time I finish this build, I reckon it would be hitting 2,000 hours for this build. So yeah, all up as it stands, $105,000 for labor, 66,800 in parts and it's not finished, so as it stands, 171,800. So yeah, I would probably say it will easily crack to over $200,000 for this build. Now yeah, bear in mind, it is my own labor, so I'm not really counting that as such. So yeah, I hope that gives you a bit of a breakdown on what it costs so far. So the next question is from JJ Menace. He's asking, Will you continue on with the car restorations? And if so, what car project is next? Now, I was actually probably gonna make an episode about this because I have been thinking about what's next for the channel. I do have a few things and a few ideas, but I was kind of gonna make an episode. There's kind of a lot to go through here, but I will answer it as uh, quickly as I can. So yeah, once the car is built, I think I'm gonna just, yeah, maybe do some shows, gonna cruise, gonna enjoy it for a little bit. So I'm gonna probably take a little bit of time off from a build. I'll probably do some little bits and pieces uh, in between this build and the next build. I was thinking, like, I've obviously got an FPV as um, my daily driver, FPV F6. So I was thinking maybe doing some work to that, upgrading the, uh, the engine and stuff on that, just doing some few bolt-ons and trying to get a little bit more power out of the uh, FPV. So yeah, I could potentially do that as a bit of like a mini mini build sort of a thing. Um, and then I was thinking, yeah, what car I could do next. I definitely do want to do another car. I don't know if I want to go as much in depth as what I've done with this build. Like this build has been a lot of my time. It's been, it's going to be a couple year build this one. And I don't know if I could do another build as quite involved as this one. I would actually kind of like to do kind of like a high horsepower build, something, yeah, with a big engine, high horsepower, a bit more racy, something that I don't really have to do so much body work on. Um, and yeah, just do a little bit more kind of racy stuff. I'd kind of like to build a car for maybe like a drag week challenge or something that I can do a bit of maybe drag racing in or something like that. But yeah, that is also gonna require a little bit more room. So the problem is like, I've got a decent shed here, but I'm gonna be pretty restricted. So this is this shed is also where I'll park my FPV. And once this is done, this is also gonna be garaged in this shed. So to build another car, I'm probably gonna to have to extend the shed out. So I've been thinking about potentially extending the shed out, making it double this size again, and then put a hoist in. That way it's gonna give me enough room to keep the tunner, keep the FPV, and then I'm gonna have enough room to do another build. So yeah, I'll potentially do that. But then I've also been toying up with the idea of buying a warehouse and taking the channel into a big kind of warehouse space. Maybe have a few builds going on, have my own build. There's been a few people that have reached out to me asking if I wanna do some work for them or do a build for them. Um, I could also, yeah, rent out some of the space. So if there's some people that don't have space at their own home and they want to do their own builds, they could probably rent out a bit of space as well. And I'll deck it out with some more tooling and um, have, you know, get some more tooling like a pan brake, um, 
uh, like a guillotine, uh, English wheel, and just kind of start doing a lot more fabrication sort of stuff. So yeah, I've been thinking about that as well. Obviously, that's gonna take a lot of money to do that, to kind of keep this channel going. So yeah, it's just an idea I've been having going through my head, but at this stage, I think once this is done, I'll just have a little bit of time off, um, do some little mini sort of stuff in between a uh, full build and then just figure out what I'm gonna do for the next build. So to answer the question, yes, I wanna do some more builds, but I'm just a little bit restricted for space once the tunnel's built. So I'm gonna have to figure that out. But if you guys have any suggestions or ideas or thoughts on where the channel should go, what you would like to see, you guys are the ones that watch the content. So yeah, I'm always open to ideas or suggestions. So yeah, leave a comment in the comment section on um, any ideas that you have or what you wanna see in the future. So I guess we'll wrap this year up. It's been a bloody awesome year for the channel. 2021, I've really enjoyed it. I've had a lot of people reach out to me. It's been some really nice comments. There's been some really good feedback of the channel. So I'm looking forward to going into 2022. I'm looking forward to getting this thing finished and enjoying it, going for cruises. And yeah, looking forward to seeing where the channel goes in 2022. So it's Boxing Day here today. It's 11 in the morning, but I'm gonna have a beer and enjoy it. So yeah, happy New Year's. We'll see you in 2022. Cheers guys.